WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Another local industry announces a temporary shutdown. Yokohama is suspending production at its West Point plant in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. The company says production will be suspended after Saturday. The shutdown is expected to last two weeks. The plant's shipping department will maintain normal operating hours along with other maintenance related jobs. The West Point plant produces commercial truck tires. The city of Columbus will remain under a curfew at least through the weekend. The curfew is from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. except for essential travel. City leaders will revisit the issue Monday. All other restrictions issued by the city will remain in place until they are repealed. Last Saturday, city leaders declared a civil emergency resulting from COVID-19. Well, coronavirus is having an impact on families all over the world. Here at home, schools and daycares have had to close. And that's leaving staff and families with a lot of uncertainty. Our Stephanie Poole stopped by one of those daycares today. She joins us in the studio with more on how they're managing. Stephanie. Andrea, every morning Dana Tate will walk in her daycare and see dozens of kids. That's no longer the case. And all she wants is for things to go back to normal. Normally this room in Mighty Oaks daycare would be loud and full of children. Now it's completely silent. I'm, I have never experienced anything like this. Director Dana Tate says COVID-19 fears caused for her daycare to shut down for the time being, impacting at least 80 families. It's to totally new grounds for all of us. It's very scary. It's a day-by-day day by day thing. We try to help parents find other alternative care and, you know, just try to work with them through this whole time. But it's the unknown, I think, that's very scary for everyone. She says the abrupt ending left her and staff members puzzled and concerned about what's next. Several people have had been temporarily laid off. We've had to temporarily lay off our staff as well because we do not know the time frame. You know, uh, I think that's what makes it hard for everyone. We've tried to make sure that our staff is taken care of and that they've had the resources they've needed to get some income coming in. This is the year Tate says she planned to retire. It's an even tougher pill to swallow knowing she can't spend the next couple of weeks with the people who matter most. I love being in the classroom and I love being in the interaction with the children. They're just the most amazing thing. I walk in and it's very uh, bittersweet, since, especially since uh, I imagine leaving here full of life and joy. I worry about the children, I worry about the families, and I pray for them and I hope that uh, everything gets back to normal as much as we can. But all she can do right now is wait and find the positives of the situation. You know, you have to try to find some good in the day to get through the day. Mighty Oaks Daycare will remain closed until further notice. The Mississippi Department of Health today reporting 94 new cases of coronavirus. The two more people, uh, two more people rather in the state have died, bringing the total to eight. Lowndes and Lafayette and Calhoun counties each have two new cases. Octimaha and Yalabusha reporting three new cases today. Chickasaw, Choctaw, Lee, Clay and Pontotoc counties all have one new case. Mississippi's total count, 579, more than 3,000 people have been tested so far. Well, business closings and temporary layoffs have many people turning to local pantries for food. Some of them are running low. An area organization is now stepping in to fill in that gap. Our Quentin Smith joins us in the studio to tell us more about what they're doing. Quentin. Yeah, Andrea, United Way of North Central Mississippi saw this big need, which led to them starting a COVID-19 food drive. During this time, many people are without jobs and money is tight. Volunteers say they understand this challenge that many families are facing, and this is their way of giving back to their community. Having food is essential, especially in times like this, and no one knows that better than Candy Creasing. The first concern that came to everyone's oh, mind was how are we going to feed all the people that are going to find themselves without a way to be able to purchase food. That concern quickly led her to this idea, creating a food drive for those impacted by the coronavirus. Pounds on top of pounds of non-perishable items filled this box, and in just minutes, it went from looking like this to like this. That's what United Way is all about. We bring people together to help each other. 
We are the community. We're the fiber that makes the connection. Doing a food drive like this when we have so many of our own neighbors that are in need, I think it's incredibly important. Hagen Walker is one of the many people to drop off donations. He says he felt compelled to help those who are in need. People that had a job last week might not have one right now, and um, just knowing that there's some uh, security to, uh, you know, at least have some of the bare essentials that you need, um, that's what we're here for, and that's what we really want to take care of. While United Way is taking care of residents over at Mississippi State, the newly formed Bullies Closet and Pantry is taking care of students. What we're doing now is we have pre-made bags which have a little bit over a week's worth of food for the student. So the student will come in, they will fill out a form, we'll check to make sure they are enrolled in at least one credit hour. They'll tell us what they need, we'll add that to the bag, and then we give them a bag and send them on their way. Montelio Hobley works with the program and says they make roughly 65 bags a day to give away to students. Volunteers say it's these kinds of selfless acts that define what it means for a community to come together as one. We're filling our shelves and then we're making sure that our community is good as well because we want to make sure that we know that this is bigger than Mississippi State and this is bigger than Starkville. This is a, this is the thing that we all have to come together on right now. The United Way will have drop-off locations set up outside both Walmart stores, Kroger, Bowles Marketplace, and the Starkville Daily News. If anyone is, is interested in making donations to Bullies Closet and Pantry, you can drop everything off on the back side of the building or just visit our website at WCBI.com. All right, Quentin, in our studio with that story, thank you. The city of Starkville, meanwhile, is activating a phone line that citizens can call if they have needs. Mayor Lynn Spruill today posted on social media that this hotline will be manned Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Callers will be able to get information about services and resources um, from local churches for things like food, counseling, delivery, and yard care. There's the number on your screen. You can call beginning on Monday, 662-323-4800. One, three. Another warm and summer-like day across our region. Currently, we have some higher clouds across our region. That's the view in downtown Tupelo. Look at these numbers still in the low and mid-80s as of 6.07 p.m. And yes, we had a new record high in Tupelo the second day in a row, 86 degrees, breaking the old record of 83 set in 1945. Scattered high clouds across our region right now. No rain expected, so get out there and make the most of it this evening. By 11 o'clock or so, upper 60s, lower 70s. Clouds will fill back in a little bit later on tonight. We should wake up the clouds. Temperatures in the 60s. We'll break up those clouds a little bit. Get back into the mid to upper 80s tomorrow. A few more records can't be ruled out. I think during the daylight hours, we're okay, but some gusty storms may be in here tomorrow evening. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Coming up, a mission trip leads to a love match. We meet a couple of unique newlyweds when we come back. You're watching WCBI's News at 6 with Andrea Self. Welcome back. Thousands of people impacted by the sudden economic downturn are getting help from two local ministries. Eight Days of Hope and the American Family Association are delivering meals as part of the outreach called Feed Tupelo. Anyone who needs lunch or dinner can make a request online and volunteers will deliver those meals to that person's home. Volunteers make the lunches and dinners at the Pontotoc County headquarters of Eight Days of Hope. In the first few days, more than 4,000 people have received meals. Feed Tupelo will continue throughout next week. Those meals are delivered without any human contact to practice social distancing guidelines, of course, that are recommended by the CDC. Well, for two of those volunteers helping with Feed Tupelo, this has been an especially busy and eventful week. As Allie Martin reports, a woman from Mississippi and a man from New York State were married at the ministry headquarters after a long-distance courtship that began on a mission trip. Their story begins in the mission field. Bruce and Lisa McQueen have served with the Eight Days of Hope ministry for several years on many different trips. Five of those bags in each of these white bags. But it wasn't until last fall during a mission project in Texas when things started getting serious. Bruce asked if he could stay in touch with me. And so, like any of my Eight Days of Hope family, I gave him my phone number. And the day after we left Beaumont, yes. the day after we left Beaumont, um, I got a, a scripture and a prayer. And I have been getting a scripture and a prayer from Bruce every day since then. Bruce and Lisa maintain their long distance relationship, learning about all they had in common and believing their relationship was a special blessing. Finally, Bruce was in Austin working with Eight Days of Hope 
when he reached out to Lisa, who was at her home in Mississippi. The Lord led me to uh, ask her on wine to me. And, uh, in other words, he texted me. Yeah, texted. <laughs> and uh, and the first said, yeah. one was, <laughs> marry me, Lisa? And I said, okay. Since Bruce and Lisa met each other through Eight Days of Hope, they wanted to get married at ministry headquarters. On Tuesday, they exchanged vows in the ministry's lobby with a few friends looking on. And when the McQueens found out the ministry was delivering meals to needy people in the Tupelo area, they joined in the effort. For our wedding gift from, from God, this is, we believe this, mm -hmm. we, we, we continue to get to serve, so we're just yeah. why we're here today. The McQueens believe their story is part of a God-sized plan they never could have envisioned. Just a year ago, Bruce was saying, just a year ago, mm -hmm. if I'd known, I wouldn't have believed it. If, if God had said, this is where you're, we're going to be, you're going to be, I'm going to be, I wouldn't have believed it. And so, and we're kind of seeing the rest of our lives like that. Yeah. We're, we're making plans and we're waiting for God to laugh and change them for us. After the Feed Tupelo outreach, the newlyweds may take a trip to Florida if their plans aren't changed by another service opportunity. Have a great day. In Pontotoc County, Allie Martin, WCBI News. And Bruce and Lisa are full-time missionaries with Eight Days of Hope. All right, so I mentioned to you that I kind of want to fire up the grill this weekend. Tomorrow, good day. Sure thing, even Sunday as well. Well, not me, but my husband. Well, somebody, right? <laughs> somebody. Yeah, just get something on the grill. I mean, uh, it's maybe just too hot to, or maybe hot just to put the meat somewhere on the, the blacktop somewhere. It's going to be a, another warm day tomorrow. Uh, but we're looking at some mild temperatures tonight down into the 60s here. Your full weekend forecast is next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Let's fire up the record high tote board this afternoon. And yes, we got new record highs yesterday at Tupelo. We tied the record in Starkville and Columbus. We broke the old record in Tupelo today, 86 degrees. We'll see what happens in Starkville and Columbus. That data comes in a little bit later, but I suspect we didn't get new records there today. And we may do some new records again for our Saturday. So this early summer-like heat continues. And look at these records around the region today. Tupelo, we mentioned that, but Meridian, Anniston, Alabama, Alabama, Muscle Shoals, Vicksburg, Greenwood, Jackson, Tennessee, all in the record books. And it's going to be warm tomorrow before this next cold front comes on in here. And we'll see a pretty nice day Sunday. It just will be a little bit cooler, but not too bad. Our Louisville, Mississippi time lapse from this afternoon. Some of those cirrus clouds drifting overhead. A great warm day for us here if you are out and about. There's the setting sun at Durham's and Vernon. You can see some of those clouds out there, but it will be a great evening. It's currently 81 degrees, 82 in the city of Columbus. Now, tomorrow night, there is a chance for some gusty storms here Saturday evening, Saturday night, when the primary threat hailed the secondary threat, the tornado and flooding threat, uh, relatively low with this particular setup. A line of storms will develop just to our west here going into the early evening hours. I think for a good chunk of tomorrow, we're going to be dry. But then the front will come on in here by late in the evening. It starts to move on in. There could be a lot of lightning with this and some heavy downpours and again some gusty breezes as that system moves on in. And then once it gets into northeast Mississippi, we suspect it's going to start weakening. And so how fast it weakens will determine whether or not we get a lot or no severe weather as the system moves on through. But we'll watch it here. Make sure you have your WCBI news app for the latest forecast. And of course, you can share some weather images with us there as well. 70 degrees at 9 o'clock tomorrow, back into the mid to upper 80s during the course of the afternoon. Winds from the south and southwest at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So another warm day here. 88 in Columbus, 86 West Point. For you in northeast Mississippi, a shot at 87 in Tupelo. Maybe a little bit warmer than that. We'll see maybe another record high. 86 here in Vernon for our day Saturday. There's some big time hailstorms developing up there in Missouri tonight. That's where the active weather is going to be for tonight. But as we mentioned, the front will move on through tomorrow and then we'll have some nice weather for our Sunday. Our next system comes on in as we get into Monday night and Tuesday. Here's your accurate weather 7 day forecast. So warm and breezy Saturday storm Saturday night, mostly sunny Sunday 76. Late rain Monday, rain and storms Tuesday 75, but pretty nice Wednesday and Thursday. Look at those lows though, getting back into the 40s. All right, they're not missing in action. We catch up with our sports team when we come back. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. 
Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the very first edition of Boxed Out. Tom Ebel joined by Courtney Robb, Chris Bolton, the WCBI sports staff, responsibly quarantining and staying inside in these trying times of insanity. What do you miss the most about sports? I didn't realize how much of a role it played in my everyday life besides work. You know what I mean? Because like two Saturday days ago when we kind of took off and tried to collect ourselves and our thoughts after working for, you know, a, a lot preparing for a postseason. Um, I just like woke up and sat on my couch and I stared out my window. Like when is my husband returning home from war? <laughs> I legitimately didn't know. It was like the first day I did wake up with college basketball, my absolute favorite thing in the world. And I guess just watching it for fun and like tweeting about it. I just miss just the, uh, just basketball. That's my favorite sport. That's why I grew up playing. That's why I watch all the time and no March madness. I've just been no no NBA on Thursdays on TNT no no anything. I've no been anything. mentally preparing myself for like March Madness and then like the immediate flip into baseball. And I'm sad about baseball too because the weather is finally getting nice and we're all stuck inside, obviously for important reasons. But I can't binge watch basketball all day and then switch over into baseball which is yeah. just like one of the most exciting but also relaxing sports because you can just chill while watching it i told chris this wonderful story which so like in my house i'm the person who is not allowed to use the family television because all i do the entire day during march is just watch especially when it's the round of 64 those like two days yeah like the 12 hour days yeah the best Mm -hmm. So what I did one year, I like went on spring break my senior year and then I came home for the like the other half of it and right as the round of 64 was beginning and I just sat in my dad's like office where there's like a TV in there with a bag of chips and like a thing of guac and I just mindlessly ate this guac. <laughs> I mindlessly ate this guac so much, I threw up from the amount of guac I ate later. Oh, no. Oh. You hate to see it. <laughs> you do hate to see it. You do. While at your time with WCBI Sports, what has been your most favorite moment? That Ingemar Baldwin game, the 1A state championship. And uh, huh? my boy... Yeah, um, what's his name? Zach Sugars, the game winner. And running around the court, everybody running around, madness, like chickens with their heads cut off. That yeah. was, that's the moment right there. You can't beat that. A game winner for the state championship. Live in person, it'd have to be this past egg bowl. Yeah. Just yeah. absolute. Insane. Insano of all of it. Um, if I'm going based on what we covered, it'd be the Morgan Williams shot against UConn. But those are kind of tied in different ways, but I think I lean more the Egg Bowl stuff actually there. And then the other one was Oxford and Oak Grove in the state championship this past year. Oh, Chris, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oak Grove alum Chris Bolton. Uh, Throw it out for him. That was the, the most whole bottle, please. <laughs> the entire bottle. <laughs> that was uh, that was probably the most insane high school game I've ever been to. The College World Series last year, kind of like as a whole, because it was the first one I had ever covered and experienced, and like it's. I think the stories we told while we were there were cool. I think, you know, the specials we put together were a lot of fun to do. And I just felt like, obviously, it didn't go the way that Mississippi State wanted, but the first game they played was, like, in regular Mississippi State comeback fashion. And Chris and I were, like, outside getting ready to do my live shot. Live shot. Like, mm -hmm. Hearing what's going on. And I'm, like, trying to refresh Twitter and be like, what is happening? And Chris is like, let me run up. And I'm about to say, I'm running upstairs, yeah. going back into the stadium. <laughs> and for them to, like, come back how they did was so incredibly on brand. This is episode one. Many more to come. It'll be Monday through Friday. Tune in for 
interviews, takes, all sorts of good stuff as we continue to talk sports in the sportsless time. I'm Tom Evel. That's Courtney Robb. That's Chris Bolton. All in our houses. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Right, breezy again on Saturday. We keep mentioning mid to upper 80s. A few more clouds, but I think during the daylight hours, not a lot of rain or storm potential here. As we get into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night, there could be some gusty storms. We'll watch out for that. Mostly sunny Sunday, 76. A good chunk of the daylight hours this weekend will be a OK. Some more wet weather as we get into early next week, Andrea. All right, we'll keep an eye on all of it. Mm -hmm. That is the news at 6 o'clock. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend.